your eyes and don't try to hide. Happy Halloween. I'm dressed as my great grandma for Halloween. She wore sweaters like this and had short hair. Also, um, I have a guest. Boo. She's cute, she's not scary. I love her. This is Wendy. She's my clown. She has the best energy and is amazing and wonderful. Leave nice comments for Wendy below. If you leave mean comments about Wendy though, I'm not even joking, I will delete them. <laughs> it's not even a joke. Also, she'll come get you. This is Pansy and they're best friends. They love Halloween, which is why they're in this video. I love Halloween, can you tell? I love spooky stuff. I love cute spooky stuff. I love absolutely grotesque, horrifying spooky stuff. I love the spooky, you know I love it, you know. And I just wanna do a cute little Halloween video. So I wanted to do a spooky painting. Funny little pumpkin sitting in a tree. So it's an acrylic painting tutorial. It is a little bit advanced. It's not really beginner, but if you're a beginner, I think you should try it anyway. If you're interested, what was that? Oh, I hit it against the buttons on my scarecrow and it made that noise. I was like, what the f But if you're a beginner, you should try it anyway. You gotta push yourself to be able to get some of those more advanced skills. So let's get into the tutorial. We're going to use this reference photo right here. I know it's just the absolute worst Photoshop job you've ever seen in your entire life. That's okay, that's okay, because painting is the ultimate form of Photoshop because we get to start from the ground up with our image. I've got a few supplies. I've got some water here. I've got a wood panel that I already painted with some burnt sienna. You don't have to do this. I just like having a little bit of color to work on top of first. This is just a wood panel. It's MDF board. You can use paper or you could use a canvas or whatever you feel like. I've got a little Little palette to mix on and I've got my colors over here. I've got quinacridone crimson, cyan primary, cadmium yellow medium hue, and titanium white. And I also have some Mars black, which I don't usually use um, when I'm painting, but we're going dark and spooky for this one, so we're gonna need some black. I've also got a palette knife for mixing if I wanna do that, and I've got a whole bunch of brushes that I can just grab for whatever I want. So what I wanna do first is I kinda wanna sketch out where our tree, our pumpkin, all our little elements are gonna be, and it's gonna be really rough. It does not have to be exact to the reference photo. I'm just kinda taking my little pencil I'm just kind of going to draw a guide really quick. We have this little phone pole in the background. It's got some little things, some more branches coming from this side. You know, it'll be good. I'm going to start off by taking just like a dark wash. I think I'm just going to take straight black. And I'm going to fill in kind of like the silhouette of my tree. I'm just taking this flat brush that's been literally sitting in this cup of water for like Probably three weeks, which is why it looks like shit. But you know, everybody knows I'm a terrible paintbrush mama. Keeping it pretty wet. I just wanna darken some of these areas to show where my tree's gonna be. Take as much time as you need on this painting. If I'm going too fast for you, like, dude, take as much time as you need. There's no reason you need to go as fast as me. I made that guy a little thick, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be exact to the reference photo. This one isn't in the reference photo, but I'm gonna add it anyway. A little extra branch down here. What I want is a dark blue that kind of fades into a slightly lighter blue for our sky. Like it's getting to evening time, but it's not quite like fully dark yet. Oh, I can see, oh, there's a major glare for my light. Okay, hold up. How awful is that lighting? Is that really bad? No, that's not so bad. Okay, we're gonna stick with that. It's kind of dark in my room, but like, it gives us some spooky ambiance, I guess. And let's mix up like a dark blue color for the sky. So I'm gonna take this blue, I'm going to add red to it as well as yellow to mute it down. A tiny bit of white. Starting with this dark blue at the top. Kind of fill in all the spots where the tree isn't. So my goal for this painting is not to focus on realism or, oh, blending is something that I'm not, I don't care about blending in this painting. That's not something that I'm focusing on this time. Instead, I wanna focus on the composition and the color and how I apply it. Okay, I'm gonna start adding some white and a little more blue to this color so we can start to shift it. Ooh, I made it extra dramatic. That's okay, that's okay. We're gonna make it happen anyway. I'm also gonna leave the spot where my pumpkin is blank for right now. Cause I wanna use up orange color underneath. So I'm just kinda gonna paint around. And now let's start to shift the color a little more. I'm adding a little more blue and I'm adding another little bit of white. 
kind of got a sloppy thing going on. I'm covering some of the edges where my tree is. That's totally fine. The only reason we blocked in that black color so that we know as a guide for ourselves where our tree is. See, I'm not focusing that much about the blending. I'm kind of giving it a little more of a painterly look. I'm cool with the color in the background showing through. I'm cool with the brush strokes showing up. I want it to look like a painting, if that makes sense. Got our little sky in there. Boop, 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 boop. No stress, do your own thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Pause this video and take your time to make it look the way you want it to look. We're gonna start to focus a little more on the tree. It's kind of brown, kind of gray. So we only have these primary colors, right? So we're gonna need all three of them. Get this muddy color going. And I'm also even gonna add a little bit of black because I want this color to be dark. I want it to be dark, 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 dark. And add a little water. We're gonna be working in layers here for sure. So any kind of like blending quote unquote we're gonna be doing is actually just layering color to kind of get the illusion that we're creating some blending. Let's get that tree trunk looking solid. Take your time with this part for sure. No need to rush on this. We want to do more details on that tree, but we're waiting for it to dry. And in the meantime, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the rest of this brown, since I have a little bit of it left, we're going to add a little bit of black to it and a little more water. We're going to thin it and we're going to make some of those little branch details that are in the sky here. So let's take a thin brush. I think I'm going to go with this size, just a little liner looking brush. And I want to start adding in some of these little branches I know are in there, but some spooky branches. And don't hesitate on these. I know it can kind of be a little bit unnerving to like get in these little details. Just kind of let them go. Cause you could spend like days and days and days perfectly drawing all these little branches. And if you want to do that, totally good. But if you kind of want to just get the impression that we've got these little spooky branches going on, go with your gut and let your hand flow. Spooky, it's looking spooky already. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm doing the big, kind of the bigger branches first. Also, I'm not necessarily sticking to the reference photo. I'm kind of doing my own thing here. Now I'm gonna take an even thinner brush. Really, really little. Let's see, who do we got? Who do we got? Who wants to come into play? How about you? This is one of my Mab Grapes brushes. Really, really thin. Getting nice and wet, getting this paint really flowing. Just really little details in here. Tiny little brush, brush strokes. And a little more water, make sure my brush is still flowing nice. I want to be able to get this nice thin point. Looking pretty cute, looking pretty spooky. And now is when I'm actually gonna put in that little foam pole. I'm gonna get a nice, straight, solid black line. I'm so bad at drawing straight lines though, so if you are as well, be patient with yourself. Oh God, you mean it has to be a straight line? What's that? That looks like a foam pole to me. I'm gonna leave it there. Let's add a couple little power lines. We're using that same thin brush. And really carefully just bring some over. Like one of those little like, you know, like little like transformers or something on the side. For like little things on the side. See like, I don't even know if this is a thing, but I'm drawing it anyway. I am taking this brush again. I'm taking straight black. And I'm gonna detail some of our most shadowed areas on our tree. The tree's already pretty dark, but I just wanna really define this tree and get it really contrasty with the sky on certain areas. So I'm adding black in just a few spots. Now, we wanna add some texture to the tree. Let's get this color mixed up to a little bit of a lighter. Sure. Got this brown mixed up and I want to start adding it to just like the center part of the tree, giving it some texture. Ooh, chunky. 
if you do kind of like a dabbing motion to kind of show that this tree has texture to it. Kind of adding spots so it looks like there's some bark on the tree. One thing to note when you're painting with acrylics is that if the color dries a lot darker, this brown color that I've got going on here, I'm like, oh, that's really light and perfect. I really like that. I'm actually gonna have to go on with another lighter brown because it's gonna dry and then darken slightly. And I'm gonna wanna shift the color to be lighter. So I'm gonna take all this same color and I'm just gonna add more white. Not too much, just like, ooh, I made squeaky noise. A little more yellow. Let's add some little bark. Bark spots, bark spots. And it's okay that if this is a little wet still, that'll give it a little bit of blending. I'm liking how that tree is for right now. What I wanna do real quick is I want to add in our moon, cause I just think it's gonna look real cute. The sooner we get it in, the happier I'll be. Okay, I would recommend that you wait for this to dry before you do this moon, cause it's nice to have your hand on the painting so you can have a lot of control, but I'm impatient. So I'm just gonna do it. And if it turns out bad, that's how it is. Oh God. Uh. <laughs> I should have checked what the moon face is gonna be this Halloween and done that. That would've been really cute. I wanna start our pumpkin area. It's gonna be tricky. This is the trickiest part of the whole thing because it's the focal point of the painting, right? So, so we are gonna do some of the light that's coming through the pumpkin first that's gonna be hitting the tree. So since we have this color here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna add yellow, red, and white to it and start making it look like there's some warm light coming off it. Yeah, just start adding some color here where the light from the jack-o'-lantern is going to be hitting our tree. Only in those areas, so it's just gonna be in these areas that are right next to our jack-o'-lantern, that are in front of our jack-o'-lantern because the light is coming out of the front of the jack-o'-lantern. Starting out not too exaggerated at first, and then we're going to move to brighter light. Now we're gonna to move to adding more white to the same color, more yellow, more red. Get those highlights really going here. Have that light just coming through for this pumpkin. See how it starts to look like there's a glow surrounding this orange spot? So even lighter and just kind of outline those areas. And then let's start doing our actual pumpkin. So this pumpkin color we want to go for, I want it to have like some moonlight reflected on it. What am I gonna do? This is tricky. This is the hardest part of the painting, so you're gonna have to be the most patient with yourself for this. And you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna zoom in too. Now we're all up and close and personal with this pumpkin. I'm making like an orange that's muted to start. So I'm taking a little bit of black and I'm taking red and yellow, mixing that up together to get a really dark color for the bottom of our pumpkin, the shadow part of our pumpkin. Looks like it's just a little basketball sitting on a tree. I want to have more like a yellow color to it, so I'm gonna take more of our yellow, kind of just do a little bit of like a yellow wash over it. Not really good blending, I'm just layering this color, but it kind of looks like I'm getting some blending in there. And a little bit of a reflection of that moon back there, so I want to highlight the back of this pumpkin just a little. I want to get a little stem on there. Take a similar color to the tree color. And now I'm just waiting for this to dry. In the meantime, I think I'm going to put in some stars. Now it kind of makes it a little less spooky, but like, I'm a fan of stars and I think it'll be cute. Hey, 
And then should we make this painting extra spooky and put bats in it? Because I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to go all out Halloween and I'm going to put some little bats back here. Because it's Halloween! I wanna! Little bats, little bats. Um, I think I'm just going to do like little, little bee shapes. Like Yeah! Ooh, spooky! Let's do a couple of those. I love them! I think that was a great choice. Yep, it's nice and dry now. So I want to start adding in the features of the jack lantern So these are going to be vibrant, so bright. They're going to be the highlight of our painting, the focal point. So I want them to be just popping. So you're going to mix up just like a beautiful vibrant orange using a bunch of yellow, some red, and like a little bit of white. I want you to start drawing in whatever you want your jack o face to look like. This is just the first of a few layers, so if you don't like how it turns out, you can paint over it, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna give mine some spooky eyes, like the reference photo has. Really scary skeleton nose. And I don't love the mouth on this reference photo, so I'm going to change it. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. I'm going to actually take some of this orange, I'm going to water it down, and I'm going to add it as more highlight on our tree. Because my highlights are still looking a little dark for what I want it to be, but I want it to be a little bit transparent, so there's going to be a lot of water added to this, but I want to add just some more light to the tree that is coming off from the jack-o'-lantern. Just a little. I'm not going to go overboard here. You can add some little extra pumpkin layers, so like I'm going to add a little bit of the brown from the tree into like this part of the pumpkin so I can show some of the dimension of it that's got some like lines in it. This is all about detail. This is the most detailed part of our whole painting. If you're gonna take a really long time of any of these parts, take a long time on this pumpkin. I'm going to start mixing up my next color, which is going to be like a pretty vibrant yellow. Adding this to the inside part of my pumpkin to kind of show through to where the inside of the pumpkin is. This is when we're really getting contrasty with the light here. I'm gonna take your sweet time on this. And then finally, I'm gonna add just some pure white into just the center parts to show it just how bright it is. Just a little though, I'm gonna be pretty conservative about this. And if you end up not liking how you did this white part, paint over it then with the yellow. Taking some pure yellow here and adding a little more vibrancy to some of these spots. The bulk of our painting is done and I'm just gonna go in with any tiny little detail that I feel like I wanna add in. So like, I wanna add some more highlights to some of these edges of the tree to kind of add a little more contrast. I wanna add a little more highlight to the edge of the pumpkin. Maybe I'll add a couple more bats or stars. I'm just taking my time here to do whatever I feel like still needs to be done in this painting. If you wanna call it done here, great. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna go just into some little more details. Alrighty, I am gonna call that done. This lighting is not great. Ah, whatever, it's just very shiny, huh? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below. I try and get to as many people as possible. The unedited version of this tutorial is available for my patrons on Patreon. If you're already a member or you wanna become a Patreon member, I hope you have a lovely, safe Halloween. I know it's a little different this year for a lot of people, but I hope everyone's making the most out of it. Watch the spooky movies in their jammies with their popcorn and their candy. I love Halloween, I love Halloween. We'll see you in the next video. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? This is by Honey Limes, by the way. Go check out Honey Limes' YouTube channel. It's brand new. Go check it out. Spooky, scary, skeletons, I don't know the words. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes?